All right, so in this video, we're going to be going over derivatives with parametric equations. So we have the parametric equations for a unit circle up here, x equals cosine t and y equals sine t, and we want to find dy dx, okay? Even though we're dealing with a parameter, our slope is still dy dx, okay? But how do we actually find that, okay? And that's the, I guess, more challenging part to just figure out how you find it, right? And really, okay, if you take a derivative here, you're not going to get dy dx, right? You no longer get that because this is x as a function of t and this is y as a function of t, okay? So you need to describe dy dx as a combination of these two derivatives, okay? And how you can do that is by saying that, let's start off here. So like I said, the derivative here will be, it's gonna be dy over dt, all right? So dy over dt equals dy over dx times dx over dt and dx over dt is the derivative here okay so why does this work well think of it as the dx is canceling out okay and then you end up with a dy over dt right and that's equal to the other side so if we just divide dx dt over to the other side now we have an equation for dy dx all right so here's our equation. We have the dy over dx is equal to dy over dt all over dx over dt, all right? Now, you can just flip this up to the top, right? You would have a dy over dt times a dt over dx, and you would see that the dt's cancel out. So you're left with a dy over dx, which is equal to the other side, okay? So this makes sense. Now, we, need just, we would just need to find dy dt, find dx dt, and great, plug that in, find dy dx. All right, so let's do that. What is dy dt? Well, that's going to be equal to the derivative here, right? So that's going to be cosine t. And what is dx dt? Well, that's going to be the derivative of our x equation, right? It's the derivative with respect to time of x, which is this, right? So that's going to be negative sine t. All right, now all we have to do is just have our cosine t over negative sine t. And this is dy dx. All right, so what if we wanted to find our derivative at a specific point? Well, here, right, our points are going to be in terms of t, right? Our derivative is in terms of t. And remember that our parameter, right, you're, you're, giving, you're given one specific time, and that gives you an xy pair, okay? So it would say something like, okay, find the derivative. So find derivative. Find the derivative at t equals pi over 4, something like that, okay? So... If we want to find the derivative at t equals pi over 4, you can probably guess what's going to happen already. We're just going to plug pi over 4 in wherever we see a t. Doing that, we're going to get cosine of pi over 4 over negative sine of pi over 4, which is just going to be rad 2 over 2 over negative rad 2 over 2, which is, of course, equal to negative 1. So that is the derivative, right? That's going to be your slope at t equals pi over 4. Okay, cool. We can also find the equation for a tangent line here at this point, okay? Using y equals mx plus b. We already know that slope, that's negative one. So we can put that down there. What about the x value? Well, if we plug in pi over four for t in the x equals cosine t equation, we're gonna get rad two over two. So that means we'll have rad two over two here. And for our y, we plug in pi over 4 here. We also get rad 2 over 2. And, of course, we have our plus b. We can't forget about that. So now, we can just make this, I guess, a negative rad 2 over 2, right? Negative 1 times rad 2 over 2 is just going to be negative rad 2 over 2. And we can add rad 2 over 2 on both sides. That means that b is going to equal... Well, 2 rad 2 over 2, which is just rad 2. 
So for the equation for our tangent line, it's just going to be y equals, it's going to be a negative x plus rad 2. All right, and that kind of does it for our first derivatives. Now, before we start talking about the second derivative of parametric equations, we need to discuss how we find the second derivative of any regular equation that we've dealt with in the past. Well, first we have to start out with the first derivative, right? We start out with that first derivative dy dx, and we take a derivative with respect to x. And that gives us our second derivative. Now, the problem here is that we don't have, a, we can't take a derivative with respect to x because dy dx for parametric equations is in terms of t, all right? So we're not going to be able to take a derivative with respect to x, okay? So we need to kind of rephrase the derivative with respect to x as a derivative with respect to t and kind of work some magic there, all right? So let's try it. If we do a derivative with respect to t of dy dx, then is there anything that we could do to kind of, I guess, cancel the dt out and have a dx on the bottom? So these things are equal, okay? Well, actually, if we were to just multiply this whole thing by dt over dx, then it does exactly that. This dt cancels out with this dt, and you're left with d over dx, which is exactly this right here, okay? So that's how we get the second derivative equation for parametric equations, it's the derivative with respect to time of your first derivative, dy dx, and that's gonna be over, what well, we could just flip this down to the denominator and that'll be dx dt, which we can easily find. All right, and which you already have found if you've already had to calculate dy dx, right? So let's try to find that for this function here or these, these equations here. Okay, what is dy dx? Well, in that last problem, dy dx was equal to cosine of t over negative sine of t. What is that the same thing as? Well, that's just negative cotangent of t, right? So we can rewrite this as negative cotangent of t. Now, if we take a derivative with respect to t, well, we know that that's gonna just be cosecant squared. All right, so we're gonna get that this derivative, the second derivative, is going to be cosecant squared of t, and that's gonna be over dx dt. What is dx dt? Well, it's negative sine of t. Okay, and there you go. That's our second derivative, all right? Now, if we wanted to find the concavity at that same point t equals pi over four, we can just plug in pi over four here and see if the second derivative becomes positive or negative. Then we know if it's concave up or concave down. So let's plug that in. If we, we can put this cosecant squared down in the, in the denominator and that would just become sine cubed t. All right, so we can rewrite this as negative one over sine cubed t. All right, and if we plug in that pi over four, okay, we get negative one over sine of pi over four. We're gonna cube that, All right? We remember, we can pull that, that cube right out. Okay, that's the same exact thing. So now we are taking that to the third power. Well, what is sine to the pi over four? That's just rad two over two. So we get negative one over rad two over two. This is going to be to the third power. So that means we're gonna end up with a negative one over what's a rad two cubed? Well, that's just going to be two rad two. So we'll have a two rad two right here. That's gonna be over two cubed, which is just eight. Okay, so we end up with a negative one over rad two over four, which is the same thing as negative four over rad two. Okay, this tells us that at pi over four, at t equals pi over four, the graph will be concave down because this is a negative answer, okay? And looking at your unit circle, right? Looking at your unit circle, where is that t 
t equals pi over 4 point going to be? Well, that's just going to be right here, right? And is the graph concave down there? Of course, right? It's, it's opening uh, downward, okay? So it is concave down, so this all works out, okay? So that's going to do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for parametric and polar in the next video in the series. See you soon.